Okay, so hey guys and welcome back to another predictions video and in today's video I'm going to be predicting the Ramirez versus Gulamirian fight. If you're new around here though and you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Like video if you do indeed like video and let's get straight into it. So, going into this fight, Gulamirian is 27-0 with 19 KOs and Ramirez is 45-1 with 30 KOs. This fight is for the WBA Super World Cruiserweight title. Ramirez's last fight was a win via Unamis Decision versus Smith Jr. And Gunamarian's last fight was a win via Unamis Decision versus Egg Gorov back in 2022. Gunamarian is 36 and Ramirez is 32. Gunamarian has been pro since 2011 and Ramirez has been pro since 2009. Ramirez is a southpaw. Ramirez's loss came via Unamis Decision versus Bivol in 2022. And to you know, speak a bit more about what I've just been saying there. Obviously, this for that that world title in which Gulamarian has been holding for quite a while now, and you know, arguably people have been saying that he's been holding up the division a bit, and you know, holding the the belt hostage, and you know, not really letting anybody fight for it because there has been multiple times now where we've seen him linked and talked about going and fighting people in the in the UK, especially. I mean. Akoli and Riakpour, they've both been people who've been linked with him quite heavily in the past and you know he's not really necessarily always jumped at the occasion I suppose even though they would be arguably you'd say bigger paydays than that of what he's used to. I've heard you know talks and claims and I don't want to be the one to fuel these but talks and claims about you know possible testing and stuff like that which he isn't too keen on uh, I mean he's also been offered to fight up tire as well and you know with Matrim being so struck strict on testing at the moment you know I'm not like I say I'm not going to be one to say too much about that but yeah that's what I just thought I'd mention Ramirez you know his last fight was coming off the defeat from the Bivol fight and he was moving up in weight and a lot of people weren't too sure how he'd be able to move up in weight I mean he's fought at multiple different weights now and you know it was it was a good it was a good win for him it was against Smith Jr who you know he kind of got forced to move up in weight as well in that fight and he's an interesting fighter Ramirez he seems to you know often try and make things that go his way and give himself an extra little boost and you know he's got to 45 and 1 with realistically only one arguably two tough fights being his last two fights and you know He's an interesting fighter, but you know, style-wise, he's he's good. He's different. He's entertaining, and he, yeah, he's. I, I think he. I, I think he did genuinely show improvements in that last fight from what I'm used to seeing from Ramirez. I think he took his time a bit more. I think he moved better than what he normally did. He's willing to be on the back foot, and then when he started landing his good combinations with his very impressive hooks that he throws. He managed to, you know, get hurt, uh, hurt Smith Jr. a little bit at times and kind of capitalise on that a little bit, and that's how, in my opinion, he won. Gunnarian's last fight, though, you know, it was back in 2022. It was against tough opponent, and it was a good win for him. But, you know, obviously, very inactive, very inactive. Fought in, I believe, 2019, and then in 2022, and then hasn't fought since. And so, he has been extremely inactive and like that's where the claims of him holding up the belt have come from but at least now we're back to see him fight him again but how is he going to be able to deal with just having so long out the ring i mean he managed to deal quite well last time he still managed to win but this is this is a tough opponent and arguably one of the tougher opponents in my opinion that good Marion has faced obviously he's been pro since 2011 but he's the older but ramirez has been pro since 2009 but he's the younger Ramirez and they both got a lot of experience and so they're both world class operators and know what they have to do to be able to win and know little tricks of the trade and everything like that. So yeah, I think this would be an entertaining fight. Obviously Ramirez being a southpaw always has another element as well. To speak about them both as fighters, so Gunamirian, he's explosive, he'll let his hands go, he's a front foot pressure type fighter who, you know, improves throughout fights and He's definitely going to be the entertaining one, well in general, I think this is going to be an entertaining fight, but yeah, with that explosive front foot nature, I'm sure he's just going to try and be in your face the entire night and be in close the entire night, and Ramirez, who typically will try to walk you down, if he goes to that game plan, then 
it will be very entertaining. But be interesting to see if we see that version or the version that we saw against Smith Jr., which was a little bit more on the back foot and well, quite a lot more on the back foot actually, and you know moving around the ring quite well and picking off his shots better, and then and then going to be the one on the front foot later on in the fight. But going back to Gulamirian, he's you know very physical as a fighter, will very much impose himself, pressure, push you back. He's the more natural fighter at this weight. He's the one that's been fighting at this weight for longer. Obviously, Gul uh, Ramirez has come up from come up in weight, and he isn't physically naturally as used to being at this weight. He has got solid time with Gulamirian, and has got very good snapping hooks as well. They've both got quite dim. Uh, you know, dissimilar hooks they've got. Gulamirian's is quite a, you know, he'll throw it from quite a neutral stance and will just whip it in with his shoulder. And it's nice to see and it's quite consistent. But Ramirez, he puts his, he's got that wide stance, he puts his whole body into it and completely twists his whole body with it. And that's also very nice to see as well. Gulamirian negatives, obviously, inactivity, it probably is going to play a big factor. This is his first time fighting in the US and Oh, he's used to fighting in France but fighting in the US is going to be a different element and being the away fighter on a Golden Boy show is definitely going to be a different element I, Yeah, the step up in opponent he's a, typically a slower starter and I think Ramirez possibly might be able to capitalise on that he's got a lack of a jab he stands quite upright he drops his guard when he's unloading his shots quite a lot cutting off the ring ain't always amazing there to be countered stands straight on forces the fight a bit as well and so, yeah, well, I think Ramirez probably will have deal, dealt with somebody possibly a bit similar to Gulamirian, but just maybe not on the level of Gulamirian. And so, yeah, we'll have to see how he deals with the pressure, but also the defensive weaknesses that you often see from pressure fighters. Ramirez, though, he's now proven he can fight on the front or the back foot. He's a mid-range type fighter, so he's definitely going to be wanting to but also, I suppose at the same time, he fights very well on the inside as well. So mid to mid to in close type fighter, he can pick his shots off. Good timing, solid combinations, powerful as well. Solid base, like I mentioned, with that that wide stance. He's high pressure, counters well, straight shots when he does let them go and nice. Uh, he's gaining that variety in his game, which is something which is happening quite late. But that loss definitely has, in my opinion, m improved him as a fighter. He's, his body work is very good. He's got a good chin. He's proven that he can take a shot now, and he, he did. To, he's had to, had to take a few in his fights, but he's he's proven that he can take one. And typically, he's known to just to try and outwork you in general. And he has got that very good work rate. And when he does outwork you, then that's when it can be a little bit too much for a lot of opponents. Negatives about him: he can be outboxed technically. I mean, that in and out type style is something which. I don't think Gilmerian is going to have in his arsenal, but that's basically how Bivol mastered it and then managed to be able to beat Ramirez in the first place. He's not overly fast. I would argue that Gilmerian, with that explosive nature, is the quicker fighter out of the two. Finding range can be sometimes a problem at mid-range for Ramirez. He can seem a little bit tense and not quite as comfortable and composed at points. His head movement... You know, physical movement can it was shown good in that Smith Jr. fight, but his head movement isn't always amazing. Speed, like I mentioned, uh, can load up on his shots a bit too long, so it can sometimes wait a bit too long and become predictable on his shots. Can try force the fight as well. He's he can get backed up, and he probably will get backed up. Uh, can also then be drawn into a fight as well, which, like I mentioned, I feel like that will add the entertaining element. And sometimes his confidence, you know, I I don't really know necessarily how that will have been affected by the Bivol loss. I mean, when you go 45, uh, 44 and 0 and then take a defeat right when you're at the brink of, you know, beating a huge name and you're, you're on a huge stage, that definitely is going to have to have played a factor for anybody. And so how is he confidence-wise will, will have dealt with that? Ramirez is the fullest fight and I think that Ramirez will win via unanimous decision. I think he's going to be there to win a few the early rounds, I think, when he's moving, and I hope that he's moving, and then firing his combinations off, then he could possibly tie Gulamarian, but Gulamarian does improve throughout, like I say, and so there could definitely be some quite close rounds in there, but in the end, I think Ramirez, he's the one that's, like I mentioned, being the more active and being at the higher level, and 
he's also got he is improving his variety in his game and I think yeah he's gonna be able to win if I unanimous decision in the end. Then who we could go on to fight, I mean Briadis is an option but that's that would be one that would be interesting in seeing. Opataya, I mean that'd be a he's on top of the world at the moment, Opataya, and I'd love to see that fight. Uh or Mikhailian, who's somebody who is the WBC champion, he's relatively similar kind of the way he's going with his career to Gulamirian really with the inactivity and kind of holding up the belt a little bit but that would be a fight which I'd be liked to see as well for Ramirez could be the person to you know move up in weight and pick off all the champions and why not go for it uh, but yeah that is it for today's video hope you did enjoy like the video if you did indeed like the video subscribe if you're new and thanks for watching